Hi gang, Julia Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. I know it's been a really long time since my last video and I'm terribly sorry, but there's been really good reason for it. Not only have I been teaching a lot, but I've been working really hard on my new product line, which is a cookie stencil line, and I'm thrilled to be bringing it to you here today in my premiere video. It's called Julia Usher's Cookie Stencil Line, and the first series of it is the Prettier Plaque series. It's been designed in partnership with Stencil Ease, which is the largest manufacturer of stencils in the United States. And the idea was really born about two years ago when I saw a lot of cookiers, myself included, struggling with message plaques and trying to keep the backgrounds from competing with the words. They were always overlapping. So this is a unique system that's designed to eliminate that issue and to make plaque cookies actually prettier than ever. So each set is comprised of four stencils, including a unique masking piece, which is what keeps the background separate from the message. In this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how to use my Give Thanks stencil set to create this gorgeous cookie just in time for Thanksgiving. And I've got at least two other stencil sets in the debut line that are Thanksgiving related, as well as a host for the holidays, both Christmas and New Year's. I've got an absolutely fantastic giveaway that goes along with this. I'll be giving away $200 worth of these stencil sets before December 6th, and I'll have details about that giveaway at the very end of the video, so stay tuned till the end. Now, as for what you'll need for this video, this little project is actually quite straightforward. You'll need a package of my Give Thanks stencils, which come looking something like this, at least one or two completely iced and thoroughly dry cookies. It's nice to have them very smooth and dry all the way through for stenciling. You'll get the best results because your stencils will lie flattest that way. You'll need a stencil frame. I've got both the Stencil Genie old version and newer version here to hold your stencils down. I additionally weight my stencils down and various elements of these sets down with different types of weights, larger blocks and smaller weights. These are actually magnets and you'll see how I use those going forward. Of course, you'll need airbrush colors. These are thinner than the normal colorings that I use for coloring royal icing, so make sure you're working with airbrush colors. An airbrush. I'll have a subsequent video where I talk about the airbrush I use and recommend and how to handle it. In this video, I'm working with a Badger airbrush, which I quite like. And then you'll need a receptacle or a sink or something to catch spent airbrush coloring. Airbrush cleaner is vital to keeping your airbrush healthy. And then lastly, for some decorative touches, I'll be putting some wafer paper bows and transfers on this particular cookie, though they're gorgeous, just plain, as you'll see. As we go along, not only will I be showing you this set and how it works to create this configuration, but I'll also be showing you a few little twists that demonstrate the versatility of these sets, because not only can you work with them as they are in the set, but you can mix and match elements of each set with elements of another. All the sets are actually sold unbundled, meaning broken up into different units, so you don't have to buy the whole set. You could just buy the frame or the background and use them that way too. So you'll be getting those kinds of tips as we go through the video as well. Let's get started. But when you get the pack, typically you'll see a sticker on the back that assures you you've gotten the right set. This is my gather set, which is another Thanksgiving set we won't be using today. And it just indicates what's inside. Basically, you'll get a background stencil, a frame stencil, a message stencil, a masking piece, which is, will, will allow room for the message later, and as well, a shading stencil. So four stencils and one masking piece. And I'm just gonna open up the one we will be using, which is my Give Thanks. You'll see the background stencil. Usually it's the most patterned and beautiful stencil exposed on the back. And when you pull that out, just beware to watch out for the little masking piece because it's often quite small. Here's what the masking piece looks like. Here's what the frame piece looks like for this particular set. This is Give Thanks. The message. And what I'm calling the shading stencil, which is nothing more than the negative piece that's left after you cut out the masking piece. But these work in different ways, as you'll see. Also, to make this all clear, of course, you'll be following along in my videos, and I'll have a playlist set up with all sorts of videos related to the stencil line. But if you lose track of that, the packaging is also very helpful. On the back of the cover, you'll find my top six steps for stenciling, either with an airbrush or with royal icing, and these sets work well with both. 
And then if you are creating layered looks with complete sets and not just using a single stencil, I've got a four-step insert that basically shows the most common method I use to create layered looks. And there's lots of versatility and lots of different ways you can mix this up and you'll be seeing those not only in this video but as we move forward. But this is a great reference tool so do hold on to this particular piece. Okay, before we start airbrushing, important thing is to protect your work surface. I've got paper towel done. I've got a little backdrop here. I often work under a hood, but do protect your work surfaces. That'll just minimize cleanup later. And the other thing I like to do is test my colors on a piece of paper first. So I've used a combination of orange, red, and brown on this particular cookie, and I sprayed them all out. Uh, I'm going to be using colors for this cookie straight out of the containers, but oftentimes I mix colors. So working with paper is a good testing point. You, if you don't like how the colors are mixed, you can always adjust here before you waste a cookie. And again, make sure your cookies are iced flat and completely dry. We will be applying some pressure to them and you don't want to crack or dent the icing surface as you go through the stenciling process. So my first step is to get my background stencil in the stencil genie or stencil frame that holds it in place. I like to orient it so that the thinner portion is face down so that the stencil is kind of suspended on my cookie. It's not quite the stencil frame is not quite hitting the ground, and that way the stencil lies flatter. The key thing is to always have the stencil lying as flat as possible against the cookie. Any areas that are lifted are areas where the spray can potentially get underneath and you'll get a more blurred pattern. Now my masking piece goes down, and this is just to block out, this is the kind of innovative piece of this set, this is to block out the area where the message will go. In the past, people just sprayed the entire background and then put the message on top, and there's quite a lot of competition between the two. But this little masking piece, I think I'm going to put my message dead center. You don't need to. But I'm going to put it dead center. And you also want to weigh that down. I usually use magnets for that or small weights of some kind so that that doesn't fly around during the airbrushing process. I like to start with my lightest color. That way I don't have to clean the airbrush so much in between colors. And I've got a fairly large cup here. And I'm just doing one cookie, so I don't need to fill it at all full. I'm just going to put a couple drops in of my orange. We'll be progressing from orange to red to brown. Got my compressor on. This is a single action gun. And I'm just going to always test on my work surface first to get a feeling for how it's working, and I think that's good. So I'm going to go over all the leaves with orange first in certain areas. If I see any areas that are lifted, that one's pretty low. I might press down with my trussing needle. Here's an area that's a little bit lifted, so I am going to press down here. The other thing I'm doing is I'm holding the air brush directly down at sort of a 90 degree angle to the cookie. That's another preventative of underspray. If you come at it from the side, you'll get more spray under the stencil than you might want. I'm going to leave a few little areas open to receive red. So I'm putting in red next. Again, testing it here till I get red coming through. You can see the red comes through almost immediately. I've got a nice cap on this gun, which is why I like it. It keeps the airbrush coloring from some, sometimes it can spill out onto the cookie if you're not careful. So I'm going to put red accents on some of these leaves, not everywhere, because I want that orange to show through as well. But this is going to give it some nice little fall highlights. So onto my brown, just going to spray it through till it comes through, and I'm beginning to see it now, so that's good. I'm going to put a few little oh, veins down the center of some of the bigger leaves with brown to give them a little more highlight. I think that's all I want to do, and now I'm going to start on, in on the stripes. Try not to touch the frame or the cookie because you don't want to knock that masking stencil out of place. I usually stop spraying when I begin to see the 
coloring begin to bead up on the stencil because it's an indication that there's maybe a little too much coloring on it. Let it dry a little bit and then I'll come back over it. So I'm doing a second coat on this side now. And I think that's pretty good. I'll lift off those magnets and then just lift straight up. This next step is optional. It makes use of my shading stencil, which looks like this. And this is just the negative piece that's left over after punching out the mask. And I use this to create kind of a shaded effect in and around the message. So just, if you're going to use it, just simply place it over the masked area, wherever that happens to be on your cookie, and weight it down. For this, I don't use the stencil genie. It's, it, it's more than I need. I just usually, typically weight it down with small weights. Again, these are magnets, but they could be anything small. Okay, so it's lined up pretty well. There's always some coloring that will scooch in underneath it along the edges. And I just, I'm gonna use the airbrush for this. You can also create shading effects by dusting on dry dust, which we'll do in another video. So a lot of versatility with these stencils. I'm working with the same brown, it's still this, the brown that I had in there, but I'm gonna give it a super light touch and I'm just gonna airbrush around the edge of the shading piece, keeping the center clear. And that's about as much as I want to hit it, just to give a light sense of shading. Weights off. There's so little airbrush coloring on there that that will dry almost instantly. And there's the shaded effect. Just to give you an example, this cookie has a little bit of brown shading inside the mast area. And that's created by using the stencil, whereas this one did, does not. I didn't use the, the shading stencil on this particular cookie, and it just creates a little bit of a cleaner look. But I like the shading, it gives kind of a vintage effect. So shaded, unshaded. So I know that I wanna create a raised frame with royal icing. So that being said, I'm gonna put my message down next. I'm gonna airbrush it and apply royal icing to the frame in the last step. You could apply royal icing to the background as well, in which case you'd want to do some of your background work at the very end. So all the steps can be mixed and matched. You don't necessarily need to go in this order, but the key thing is to apply royal icing in the last step. So message down, I'm going to center it right in that area. And again, use my small weights. I, I come as close to the lettering as possible. Again, the cookies tend to dip down in the center the way the icing dries and so I like to wait as close to the pattern as possible just so it lies as flat as possible. Okay, to remove these weights I like to at least have one finger on the stencil at all times so that if the the coloring is still wet, I don't smudge what's underneath. And then I'll roll off the stencil and it looks great. You don't want your airbrush to sit too long with coloring in it because it dries very quickly, as you can see on the cookie, and it dries equally fast in the airbrush. And that can cause the airbrush to plug. So I like to use airbrush cleaner, which you can buy at any number of places and hopefully on stencilease.com, my site as well. If, not, if it's not there now, it will be there in short order. You can also use vodka, and I first like to just dump some in the cup and flush out any extra coloring that's in there, but you also want to just spray it on through. And you can either do this on paper towel or into your receptacle here. So I'll sp spray in here initially, but then we want to spray on our work surface. It's still got coloring coming through. So we just want to spray until it's clear of coloring. Many people dismantle their brushes to clean them, and if you properly clean them immediately after using coloring, like this, there's very little need for dismantling in my experience. But I'll have another video that addresses that if need be. Before we move on to the royal icing, it's nice to clean your stencils as well, particularly if you've used royal icing on them because it builds up. But to do that, I'll have a full and more extensive video on stencil care, but I thought it was important as you're using these stencils to really understand how to clean them. Some of mine are much more delicate and more intricate, I should say, than other stencils on the market, particularly the backgrounds. 
And if you don't wash them properly, you can damage fine areas and, and then ruin the pattern. So basically I like to rinse them under low flow warm water. My stencil material, which is 10 mil mylar, which is more durable than most stencils out there can withstand higher temperatures, but there's no reason to tempt fate. So I rinse them under low flow water or just by soaking them in a basin of water until they look like so. Then to dry them, this is the critical part. You do not want to take a paper towel and scrub back and forth or you'll most certainly lift all these tiny areas and damage them. So to dry them, I always put them uh, flat on paper towel or cloth towels, fine and then take more paper towel and pat them dry like so. And if I'm doing the whole set, I'll just stack them in layers and make sure they're completely dry. Again, no rubbing back and forth, just patting in an up and down motion to dry them out. And then they can be stored in plastic Ziploc bags or in handy storage folders, which we will soon have online on stencilese.com so that you don't lose any of the smaller pieces. You'll see I've got my frame stencil centered over my masked area and around my message. And I don't use the Stencil Genie for this because I'm working with a pretty wide spatula and it just gets in the way. I will be introducing some smaller spreader tools which are much more amenable for use with the Stencil Genie and for getting into small places. But for now I'm working with my simple offset spatula and I'm just going to hold down the stencil. I've got the cookie on some non-skid material so it too does not slide as I go through this process. My first step is just applying the color to all the openings kind of generally and I'll worry about smoothing it in the last step. And now in this last step I want to clean my spatula off completely and smooth out all that roughness basically take that icing down to the level of the stencil. I think I need a little bit more there. I'm going to do that in two swipes cleaning the spatula two or three swipes cleaning the spatula between swipes, either on the back of my counter or with a clean cloth. I think I need to rotate it to do this. You don't want to swipe too much because you'll just muck up the icing. It dries very quickly. But I think I've got good smooth even coverage. So to take off the stencil again, I like to anchor one side rather than lift it up directly up and possibly shake it and ruin the stencil. So I'll anchor one side with a finger and roll it off to the other. I've got a great little border with a frame stencil. So this cookie looks beautiful as it is just working with my four stencils and the masking piece. So I'm going to show you a couple of different options for embellishing the cookie and also a couple of ways of twisting things up using my stencil sets. So in this case I took the same basic cookie and put a series of red dots on the edges and apply some wafer paper bows and a little royal icing transfer, which is what I think I'm going to do here. This cookie just demonstrates a slightly different way of embellishing. Same red dots around the edges, same royal icing transfers here, but I added a little royal icing accent through the middle, but otherwise chose to leave it plain. This cookie also demonstrates how great the stencils look on smaller plaques and different shaped plaques. This is a completely different shape and it still looks great. And then lastly, this cookie is just plain, completely airbrushed all the way through. I don't know if you noticed the difference, but the frame is not raised. That was airbrushed as well. It looks terrific that way. And the message in the center is completely different. So this is just an example of me swapping in a message from another set that happens to fit this same mask and frame quite beautifully. This is my gather set, another Thanksgiving set, and you can create a completely different look. So a lot of versatility. And one last way to possibly embellish these, which I'll be showing in detail in another video, is to create royal icing transfers using the stencils. In this case, I use the background stencil and just spread royal icing over the leaf areas to create these little leaves. I used both orange and red icing and smeared it over that. Did that on acetate, allowed it to dry, and then they can be lifted off and then placed separately on the cookies. So I could stick these down with a little more royal icing here and continue the theme of leaves using the very same background stencil. So that's one other decorating option. But what I think I'm going to do on this particular cookie that we did in this video is just trim it out with the wafer paper bows and bead as I did the first one. I'm just going to use a little bit of icing at the top to place the bow. 
because I don't want to conceal too much of my frame. I'm not using too much royal icing because I don't want it to poke out the sides. And there we have it, little bow and bead finishing off the Give Thanks cookie. So remember, I'm a more is more person and I don't want to leave this video without giving you guys something. After all, it's Thanksgiving and that's the right thing to do. As I mentioned at the top of the video, I've got a fabulous giveaway surrounding my stencil launch. I'll be giving away $200 worth of these stencil sets or other related stencils and accessories on the StencilEase.com site. It's super easy to enter. Simply click on the link on the screen. You'll be taken to a giveaway that looks a lot like the picture you're going to be seeing on the screen and then follow the steps there. There are actually six ways to enter. So I encourage you to enter all six ways. As you enter more ways, you increase your chances to win. And please do so before December 6th at midnight, which is when the giveaway closes. Best of luck to all who enter. Happy Thanksgiving and live sweetly.